One of the biggest challenges people face when learning a new programming language is not knowing where to start or not knowing what to learn next. This is why I created a simple and straightforward Python self-study curriculum. By following this curriculum, you should be able to get to an advanced Python skill level within four weeks. Don't get me wrong, you're not going to become a Python expert and you're not going to be able to build self-driving cars after four weeks. But you will be comfortable writing some intermediate Python projects and you will have an excellent basis for learning more specialized stuff like machine learning and data science. You can find the full curriculum on my GitHub profile if you want to look at a text-based version of it. Now before we get right into it, I want to mention that the time frame of this curriculum is just my recommendation. If you have never programmed before in your life, you will probably need more time. And if you're following along with my tutorials for some time already, you will probably complete it way faster. No matter on which side you are, go through the content at your own pace. If you feel like everything is way too complicated and you need more time, so be it. If you rush through this curriculum in a week, great. Don't let my recommendations limit you in any way. Having said all that, let's get started. Everything starts with the first week in which you will primarily get in touch with the very basics of not only Python, but of programming in general. The goal here is to get comfortable with basic concepts like data types, variables, operators, loops, functions, and more. You will also want to learn how to handle exceptions and write into files. At the end of this week, you should be able to build a simple command line calculator. In this table, you can see my recommendation for when to learn which concept. The days are not too important, but I highly recommend you don't mess around with the order too much since the topics build on top of one another. In order to learn all of these things, you can use whatever resources you like. You can use tutorial websites, you can buy professional books, or you can watch YouTube tutorials. If you prefer using my content, you can take a look at my Python beginner tutorial series on YouTube, even though it's quite old, or you can buy the first volume of the Python Bible series, which you can find on my website. However, feel free to watch the tutorials of other great YouTube channels if you prefer their teaching style. In this week, you will probably have to invest around one to three hours per day, depending on your experience and speed of learning. Week number two is focusing on some intermediate concepts. For most people, it is usually not too hard to get started with Python because the path is quite clear. First, you build a Hello World program, then you learn about variables and data types, then about loops, functions, and so on. But what do you do after that? There is so much to learn and you don't know which concepts are based on which other concepts. For this curriculum, we start by getting more familiar with object-oriented programming. You will first learn what classes and objects are and how to work with them. Inheritance is also an important concept here. After that, it is important to learn about recursion. Up until now, you have probably only written iterative functions, but in programming, you will oftentimes encounter recursive functions as well. And it might take some time to wrap your mind around those. Once you have internalized all of that, we start working towards network programming. For this, we will first learn about multi-threading and queues. Even though these concepts are not directly linked to network programming, you will oftentimes use them together. By combining multi-threading, queues and sockets, you should be able to build a basic TCP chat or a port scanner. It is also useful to learn a little bit about database programming. In Python, you can use SQLite 3 to do some basic inserts, selects and deletes. For this, you will probably need a whole day, especially if you don't know any SQL. Finally, you will play around with logging and processing XML and JSON files. Even though these concepts are not essential parts of the Python language, they are quite useful in many projects. If you feel like all of this is not enough to fill a whole week, you can also spend some time learning about regular expressions. You can use those to check if strings match a specific format and to manipulate strings. For this week, you will probably have to invest two to four hours per day. Since the concepts are quite different and mostly unrelated, this might be a bit of an information overload for complete beginners. So feel free to either spend some more time per day or to use two weeks to internalize these concepts. Here again, you can choose whatever resources you like to learn all of this. On my channel, you can find an intermediate Python playlist and on my website, you will see that the second volume of the Python Bible series is focusing on all of these concepts. After this week, you should be able to follow along with all of my networking related Python tutorials. 
It shouldn't be too hard for you to build TCP chats, FTP clients, and mail clients with the help of Google. The third week is what is going to make you a programmer instead of just a script kitty. Here you will not only learn about concepts and libraries that will allow you to do more, but you will also learn how to write more efficient, cleaner and more beautiful code. In the beginning of this week you will want to familiarize yourself with some functional aspects of the Python programming language. Some of those are mapping, filtering, list comprehensions and lambda expressions. These things might confuse you a little bit because up until now you have mainly programmed in an imperative fashion, but sometimes these tools can make building programs much easier for you. Another important concept that you will learn in this week is properly documenting your code using doc strings. Trust me, your colleagues will thank you for it and so will your future self. For the rest of this week you will mostly focus on learning very Python specific things like magic methods, decorators, generators, argument parsing, encapsulation and type hinting. Most of these things don't add a lot of new functionality to your skill set. After learning them, you will not be able to build a lot of new things, but using them in your projects will make your code more reusable, more professional, and more beautiful. Finally, you will want to spend one day learning only about the various design patterns like the composite pattern, the factory pattern, and many more. Those will show you how the structure of your code can make your life as a programmer much easier. All of these concepts are covered in two playlists on my YouTube channel. The first one is called Python Tips and Tricks and the second one is called Advanced Python Tutorials. I have recorded most of these videos quite recently and you will find all the necessary explanations in them. For this week you will probably have to invest 2-5 to five hours per day since you really want to understand the concepts deeply. In this last week you will probably learn the most even though you are not going to be actively focusing on learning new skills. This last week is called the project week. You will complete one project of realistic size every single day. The important thing here is that you do not limit yourself to projects that seem very easy to you. You will want to choose projects that make you slightly uncomfortable but are still realistic for you. Don't expect to already know all the functions and libraries before starting a project. Learn about them on the fly. For example, if you know how to use sockets and multithreading and you want to build a file sharing system, don't shy away just because you don't know exactly how to do that. Google, research and read documentations. That's the most important skill a programmer can have. I don't think that I have ever completed a single project of significant size without Googling multiple times. You will learn the most while struggling to complete a project. However, don't expect to build a perfect Skype clone in a day just because you know how to use sockets. This would only overwhelm and demotivate you. How much time you spend programming every day of this week entirely depends on your ambitions. If you choose to build simple projects you feel comfortable with, which is perfectly fine, one to two hours might be enough. If you choose to really struggle and learn a lot in this week on the other hand, you might need to invest five to eight hours per day. It is up to you, you choose your projects. However, I want to give you some resources in case you need some inspirations or ideas. First of all, you can find many different playlists full of projects on my channel. I have playlists on artificial intelligence, networking, finance, computer vision and on more general stuff like encryption, hangman games, etc. Also you can browse through my github if you're interested in some larger projects. And finally I also have a blog post with more than 50 ideas for python projects on my website. You can find a link to it in the description down below. I hope this curriculum helped you to find a structured way to learn python. If you guys like it and the feedback is positive, I will definitely do some more curriculums for learning data science, machine learning, finance, cybersecurity, etc. So make sure to hit the like button, leave a comment in the comment section down below and subscribe to this channel if you haven't done it yet. Other than that, thank you very much for watching, see you in the next video and bye.